Christmas in the year that never was 2020. Ah, we will remember this forever and it will go down in history as not nice. Okay, who stole Christ out of Christmas? Isaiah 9 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well-known scripture. Everlasting Father literally means Father of Eternity. He alone is the source of eternal life. Prince of Peace indicates that the Mighty God will be benevolent, a benevolent ruler bringing eternal peace on earth through the establishment of his kingdom. The Old Testament saints looked for a very special day and a very special person. A sinner's heart calls out for peace and looks in all the wrong places for it. We find Christ's birth, in Christ's birth that the promises of his prophecies were fulfilled. Human desires and a divine pledge came together in Bethlehem under the canopy of God's love. The Christmas story is about God's kept promises to humanity, a promise of forgiveness, deliverance, love, steadfastness, a promise of life itself. Now there was a guy called Roger Pickett, a Baptist minister, and he says, well, probably still is a Roger Pickett. I don't think he's dead yet, so let's not shuffle him off too quick. He says, Last year I gave each of my grandchildren two gifts. Wow. One gift was a cataract operation that gave sight to a blind person in Nepal. I made donations for the four operations in my four grandchildren's name. I bet they were so excited. Don't you reckon they'd be rat? The other gift was something to wear or use made in a cooperative craft shop in a poor village in a third world country. All my Christmas gifts were purchased from catalogues that supported this same kind of giving. My feet never hurt, my soul never felt better, no big gift wrapped package under the Christmas tree with a card from Grandpa. It, it was a hard thing to do. Yeah, right. I, I felt like the Grinch who stole Christmas, even though I know I am not. Christmas was stolen a long time ago. I hope my grandchildren someday will understand I am trying to give Christmas back to them not take it away. So our first thief is tradition. Tradition has come to honour the man more than the Christ. Romans 1.23 Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. The tradition of Santa Claus Oh, Santa Claus, he gets more honour than the Lord Jesus Christ, even at the time we say we are celebrating his birth. Let's compare Santa and the Lord Jesus. Santa, fat old guy with a gaudy red suit, sees little guys no one else can, called elves, has an unnatural relationship with reindeer, they talk to him, likes children to sit on his knee, sneaks around your house in the middle of the night. Okay, let's go to the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2, 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 3, 16, 
Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up into glory. And Revelation 1, 12 to 18, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. He, his head and hair were white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. Out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, and he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Our second thief is time. Time has a way of altering what is real and full of vitality into ritual. Years ago in, in a central European town, the older townspeople as they passed by a certain ordinary looking wall could be seen looking at the wall with holy reverence. A visitor asked why they were doing this and no one knew. The visitor's curiosity led him to begin chipping away at the layers of whitewash and dirt covering the wall until underneath he had discovered a beautiful mural of Mary and the child Jesus. Generations before, the townspeople had had a reason for looking at the wall, but succeeding generations had only learned the ritual. They continued to go through the motions without knowing the reason. This is the danger we face, and not just at Christmas, going through the motions without our ever knowing why. Anything that we do, especially connected with Christianity, especially connected with church, if we don't know why we're doing it, we should examine why we do it, and if it doesn't seem to have any decent reason Toss it out. Our third thief is things. What is our priority? When the kids were growing up, we liked to go to the meeting before any gifts were given. It was and still is our way of thanking God for his gifts to us. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, wear is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? <laughs> See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. And yet, I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as you... As, 
as well. That's better. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Ain't that true? Each day has enough trouble of its own. And who believes that? Yes, I heard a few there. Now, millions of dollars are spent on cheap plastic toys. And the children would often play, would often rather play with the boxes in which they came. Many are going to end up disappointed in that they did not get what they thought they needed when all the time God has provided exactly what everyone needs. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8 And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today that in the town of David a Saviour has been born. To you, he is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. What an awesome story that as it happened, can you imagine being those shepherds out in the field, not used to any other light except the starlight and the moonlight, and suddenly the whole vista is lit up with a holy light. I, I think that would have been the, one of the most amazing um, experiences that you could ever have. And yet, God comes into your heart if you ask him. And he illuminates your heart and changes you forever. Maybe you've never done that before. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Now is a great time to do that. And what I'd like you to do if you, if you ask Jesus to come in is to get with a Christian. Someone you know is reliable. Someone you know is strong in the things of God. And ask them to take you through and help you through with, with um, your decision. Bless you. That's Christmas Day 2020. Let's hope there are no more 20s. We desperately need a 21. We need to move on. We need to get our church back in the building where it should be and we need to be plugging in. But just for the time being, we have to be patient, folks. So bless you. Have a great day.
Me and my dream.